Mr. Braff is the English teacher. But sometimes he teaches other things too. Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. It's the start of a new series which I'm really excited about. Uh, most of you will probably know me as an English teacher, but I also teach RE as well, uh, once a week. And I've uh, been doing some really interesting lessons that I've kind of really enjoyed, found very successful lessons that I thought I would start sharing online. So the plan is that every Sunday, my video on the Mr. Bruff channel will be based on my RE lessons. And um, I think you'll find them very interesting. I know that it's a very contentious issue, is uh, religion and God and the Bible and Christianity and Jesus. And I think it's quite interesting that if I was to present an analysis of a poem, um, you would probably watch that, everyone would watch that and then either agree or disagree or find points interesting and, you know, something to think about and ponder. But it wouldn't evoke strong emotion. Whereas when we talk about religion and God and the Bible, um, and present our views on that, it does seem sometimes to really um, evoke a lot of emotion and having looked around YouTube at some similar videos, it's quite interesting how a real flame war can start. So I'm not looking for that, I'm, I'm not looking for any kind of uh, you know, big kickoff. All I'm looking to do is to present to you what I think is some very interesting thoughts for you to consider. And uh, as you see on the screen, a picture of a man reaching up to Jesus. Now, uh, in my RE lesson, in lesson one, um, I started by talking to the group about my own beliefs, my own thoughts on religion and God and the Bible and Christianity and Jesus, um, what I thought about that and, and why I thought it. And then I asked the group to write their beliefs down. And the reading was really fascinating. There were uh, a number of students who did believe in God and there were then a number of students who said that they didn't believe in God. And what I found really interesting and what really kind of sparked me on to, um, to make this series is that everybody who said they didn't believe in God put it down to two things. They put it down to two things which in this picture are kind of blocking the man from reaching up to, to Jesus. They put it down to creation, um, or the, the concept of the Big Bang and the creation of the world and the universe, and they put it down to evolution, or the creation of life. So I'm going to address both of those topics. I'm going to look at creation today, the creation of the world, and I'm going to look at them from a viewpoint which is opposed to this picture here. So this is a very old school Street Fighter picture, um, you know, and it's saying science versus religion fight um, and it's my belief that science and, and religion science and the bible are not at war that actually um, if you look at it in detail which i plan to do over this series that science backs up um, the bible and uh, the, the the sort of the christian viewpoint and uh, that is i think something that um, not many people would perhaps know, or certainly in schools, it's not something that seems to be taught. And um, I just thought it would be interesting for me to put my views out here onto YouTube so that you've got uh, uh, perhaps a more rounded idea on these topics. I'll be, um, I think I've just said, I'll be using the, the subjects of history and RE and science to make my points. I won't be giving sort of personal anecdotes and uh, you know, my own, uh, you know, life story, as it were, I'll just tell you what I believe are some very interesting things from science and history that suggest that unlike this picture, uh, science and the Bible, science and religion, science and Christianity can be symbolized in this picture, which is the, the blending together of Jesus and of Einstein. Um, and, and I do believe that science and religion are not at war. And that is the, the kind of uh, subtext of, of this series, which I hope will at least get you to think about these topics. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on these points. Science is not at war with God. Science is often focused on discovering the mechanism by which something is made. But discovering the mechanism by which something is made does not mean it has no creator or no maker. 
So let me give you an example which I think is uh, easy to understand. The cup of tea example. So this is a picture of me making a cup of tea. Um, rather foolishly, I wore a white shirt, I had a white kettle and a white cup, but I think hopefully you can uh, see that in the picture. So I made a cup of tea and I was its creator. I think that's uh, no one would dispute that. Now, if we look closely at the uh, the science of the cup of tea, we can examine how a cup of tea is made. Looking, for example, at the findings of Joule, this bearded scientist, we can analyse that the making of a cup of tea um, includes thermodynamic entropy, as represented in this rather snazzy picture from NASA. We could um, look at some of the other scientific processes that are taking part in the making of a cup of tea. We could map it all out in a flow map. We can look in detail at how a cup of tea is made. But just because we can work out how the cup of tea was made, it does not mean the cup of tea did not have a creator. So I've taken myself out of the picture there, and that shows, you know, just because we can work out thermodynamic entropy and all the things that are taking place in the making of that cup of tea, it does not take me out of the picture. The cup of tea did not make itself. Um, the cup of tea was made by me. I was its designer and creator. I was still the maker of the cup of tea. And it is my belief that in the same way, science can help us to understand um, in many cases, how the world was made, but that does not mean it doesn't have a creator. And that creator, in my belief, is the God of the Bible. So, um, that's the standpoint I'm coming from. And uh, what I want to do to begin with is to think about a little sort of history lesson in science and, and to kind of build that up to the, the Big Bang Theory. So 200 to 300 years ago, scientists believed that the universe was eternal. They believed that it had always been there and that it didn't have a starting point. That was the widespread belief 200 to 300 years ago um, in the scientific community. Well, that kind of changed um, very dramatically when Einstein in 1915 came up with his theory of relativity and he proved without a doubt that the earth had a starting point, that space and time are not absolutes, they had a beginning. So that then absolutely changed the, the world of science. I think it's very interesting how science is, is constantly changing. Um, I don't think we see that probably in, um, in, you know, in our sort of schools, uh, school studies because we're just looking at the current theories but they always are changing and Einstein's theory of relativity really did prove that the earth had a starting point so um, Hubble with his uh, telescope also proved that galaxies are moving away from us so they when they looked into space they expected to see uh, everything just all the planets and everything else and the galaxies just kind of standing still but they were surprised to find out that actually they were moving away, everything getting further away over time. And this proves that there was a starting point. Because it is constantly expanding, the universe had to start at some point. So they could actually trace back that route that everything's moved on and, and sort of work out where it all started. So we got to this point now where science proves that the Earth began. And I think that's, uh, you know, the key point to take here. Also, there is a lot of cosmic background radiation. That's radiation which we can find no source for. Um, there is a lot of it, and this is a little picture of it, which shows signs of the start of our world. It shows that at one point there was nothing, and then all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, there was the world. And of course, when that happens, there was uh, you know an effect on the uh, you know the sort of surrounding parts of the universe and that's where we can look at the the background radiation we can see it's like a thumbprint or a footprint we can see you know this this big um, moment where the world was created well it's my belief that that wasn't um, the big bang but actually well this on the screen 13.7 billion years ago there was nothing 
one second later there was a world now that is the the scientific um, explanation of uh, you know how the world began now I believe that atheism doesn't explain this that there was nothing and then click your fingers there's the world I believe that to find uh, something that backs that idea up we need to look at the Bible and the Bible in Genesis which means beginning very um, fitting for the story of the beginning of the world says that in the beginning there was God uh, the earth was formless and empty and God said let there be light and there was light so that very much backs up the scientific proof that at the, in the beginning there was nothing and then one second later bang there is the creation of the world that God created now that's one point one way of looking at how science and scientific study can actually back up and prove Christian uh, teachings from the Bible and of course that you know those uh, points in the Bible were written thousands and thousands of years ago way before the scientific studies proved the points which the Bible seems to be making so it's not like the Bible changed its ideas based on um, you know the scientific um, study so like I say 200 300 years ago um, scientists would have said you know the Bible's wrong uh, the earth wasn't created by God uh, the universe wasn't created by God it's always been there well today with our new discoveries in science we would say okay actually yeah you know um, we agree the earth wasn't always there in fact you know it wasn't there and then all of a sudden one second later it was there um, of course mainstream science wouldn't then turn around and say oh you're right then God did it but you know I think that um, you know there's there's, a, there's some interesting evidence for that uh, in those scientific points the next thing I want to look at though is just how amazing the world is there's a picture of the world from outer space I always think if you fell and you know gravity was was in place which it wouldn't be you know imagine falling free falling from there all the way to your house that'd be pretty crazy maybe that's a crazy thought anyway there are nine things which I think are so amazing about the world are so specific are so perfect are so precise that they point to there being a creator that they point to there being a God and I'm just gonna whiz through those with you the first is the tilt of the Earth's axis. So um, the angle of the Earth is that it is not straight up and down. It's tilted at about 23 degrees. No other planet is tilted like that in the known universe. So why is it tilted at 23 degrees? Well, it's so that as um, just like a chicken on a, on a spit that rotates, it's so that the sun and the, e the distribution of the heat from the sun is perfectly equal to all parts of the earth okay so that's the first thing that is very specific about the earth the next thing is the rotation of the earth so the earth is rotating on that tilted axis at a speed of around a thousand miles an hour and that is a very specific critical speed for life to exist so what if it was 10 times slower and it was going around at 100 miles an hour well our days and nights would be 10 times as long so our hot summer days would be you know say we have like 12 hour long hot daytime in the, in the uh, you know in the summer it would be 10 times as long we would have 120 hour long hot days and can, you can imagine what that would be like the heat would build up so great it would scorch everything on the surface of the ground whatever survived the incredible heat of the day would be frozen in the 10 times as long nights temperatures would plummet to minus 240 degrees and you know it would life couldn't exist um, without the the rotation being the speed it is at the moment and our world is rotating at just the right speed to alternate between heating and cooling and the earth is tilted just right and turning just right okay so what else well what about the oscillation of the earth's axis so although we are tilted at 23 degrees the earth wobbles slightly off of that 23 degree tilt by a further three degrees it wobbles up three back to 23 down three back to 23 
And while it does that, it does it with amazing regularity. Bear in mind it is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Now our seasons and all of our climates depend upon that oscillation, that tilt of six degrees. Anything more than three degrees up from the average and the sun would strike the earth with such force and heat it would evaporate the oceans and we'd have two massive ice caps at the poles and a boiling cauldron of lava in the middle. Life as we know it would perish from the earth. Everybody would die. Now, a drop of more than three degrees off the average would result in the ice caps melting, flooding the earth, any land masses that still existed, the increase in liquid would literally suck the carbon dioxide and oxygen out of the atmosphere, it would kill all the plants, all the animals, all the humans, life couldn't exist. So there so far are four things that are working together just right in our world, tilted just right, spinning just right, wobbling up just right, wobbling down just right for life to exist. What else? The depths of the oceans. Now the former president of the American Academy of Sciences said that if the Earth's oceans were just a little bit deeper when the Earth began, the extra water would have robbed the atmosphere of the oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the atmosphere we breathe in at the moment is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% trace elements. It's just the right combination for human life to prosper. But without it, life would have never begun. Therefore, the Earth's oceans are just the right depths in relation to the atmosphere. This is probably my favourite one, the thickness of the Earth's crust. The Earth's oceans are the right depth, but the Earth's crust is the right thickness. If the Earth's crust was only 10 feet thicker, that would oxidise all the Earth's oxygen when the world began. 10 feet more solid matter on the Earth's crust makes the difference between life and death. So now there are six things working just right. The tilt, the spinning, the wobbling up, the wobbling down, the oceans, the Earth's crust. Everything is just right for life to exist. But there's more. There's the speed of orbit. We are moving around the Sun in an elliptical orbit at just the right speed. It's not a circular orbit, but an elliptical orbit. We're spinning through space around this orbit at about 18 miles per second, and that is just the right speed. If it slowed down just a couple of miles per second, we would be pulled into the sun and burned to a crisp. Or, if we increased our speed, we would freeze to death. So the speed around the sun is just right. Lots of things that are just right. The distance from the sun. We are 93 million miles away from the sun. At that distance, we get just the right amount of heat to survive. The sun's like 12,000 degrees in temperature. But for us, 100 degrees seems really hot weather. So we are very fragile. And we would die if the temperature varied 50 degrees higher or lower. That's just half a percent of the actual heat of the sun. If it was half a percent hotter down here from the sun's temperature or half a percent colder, we would die. If we were just a few degrees closer to the sun, we would burn up like a torch. If we were just a few degrees further away, we would freeze like an ice cube. It's all perfect. And finally, the distance from the moon. While the Earth is spinning around and racing around the sun, the moon is moving around the Earth at just the right distance. Because at the present distance, it controls the, the ebb and flow of the tides. Now, if our moon was a little bit closer, the increase in gravitational pull would cause the lower regions of the Earth to flood. The tide would erode the land masses until finally all the mountains would crumble into the sea. So the distance of the moon is just right. Now it is my belief that all of those factors being just right is too much for coincidence. It's too much to pin it down to a big bang theory, to chemicals exploded and made that world with all of those bits just right as they had to be. Let me give you an analogy. Let me explain it in simple terms. Imagine a game of Scrabble. I hope you know the game Scrabble. You basically have letters and you have to make words out of them. It's all about the the placement on the triple letter, triple word, double word, score, and all that sort of thing. Imagine you have just played a game of Scrabble with your family in the living room. And then you pack the box away and put it on the sofa. And imagine you've got a cute dog like this one. Okay. Now, I want you to imagine that you're in the kitchen and you hear a big crash. So you run into your living room. And there on the floor, the Scrabble pieces have all been knocked over. And um, you look at the letters and in amazement you say, oh look, D-A-D. -D. 
it's the word dad and you get all excited because you can pick out the word dad well we all know that um it's just chance isn't it that those um scrabble tiles falling like that is just chance there's no um you know big kind of uh, excitement to be had there but what if you ran in and, and the letters spelt a message I know this one's on grass it's the only image I could find what if it's spelt a complete message like please buy my books well if it's spelt a complete message you would probably think that it wasn't the dog that knocked the pieces over you'd probably be looking for your little brother hidden behind the sofa playing a trick on you to try and make you think it was the dog but it is my belief that in the nine steps that I just went through before is a bit like this idea of the Scrabble tiles, that the world is too amazing, and too complex and too perfect and specific for it to have been an accident, for it to have been unplanned, for there not to be a creator. I think the, the, all of those scientific facts about the Earth, because they're all scientific facts, aren't they, that you know, we, we've proven through, through science, they prove that the world is far too amazing for there not to be a creator. And I hope they, they give you something to think about. In the next video next week, we will look at um, a similar uh, concept in how can um, the Bible and Christianity uh, match up with the ideas of the creation of life. Please do subscribe to the channel. I hope you found this interesting and thought-provoking. Thank you.